Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the process of hemostasis, um, which is the process whereby uh, you stop hemorrhage, okay? So, uh, when you cut yourself and you bleed, then in the, um, in the, well, if you wait for about five minutes, you'll stop bleeding, usually. And uh, this is the process of hemostasis. Basically, uh, the blood vessels have been blocked off. They've been sealed so that they no longer leak blood out. Um, okay, and that's the process of hemostasis. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, uh, this is the American spelling of hemostasis. There is also uh, the British English spelling of hemostasis, which looks like this. Now, because I am in England, this is the form that I have been taught to use, and therefore I cannot just talk about this form uh, of the word. Um, however, my main viewership is American, and therefore uh, I've put the American English spelling of it before the English, uh, the, sorry, the British English spelling of it. Okay, so, uh, let's set this up then. Let's give us a scenario. So, let's say you cut your finger, okay? And what happens once you cut your finger is that blood starts to come out. So, we now want to look at the process by which um, that, that bleeding is stopped, basically. And this is the process of hemostasis. Okay, so let's say that we have some blood vessel that has been cut open, okay, and that's how the blood is going to ooze out. So, uh, let's draw a typical blood vessel, and we'll say maybe it's an arteriole that is within your finger, which has been cut open. So, let's show the uh, different layers of this arteriole. Okay, so, we'll draw a nice big picture here of our arteriole. Okay, so we've cut open an arteriole, and this is what's bleeding out. Well, one of the things that is bleeding out, of course, when you cut your finger, you'll cut for a huge number of blood vessels. But we're just going to look at a single one to simplify matters down. So, uh, the arteriole has three uh, main layers uh, that make up its wall. So, we'll start off with the most inner, the innermost layer, which actually lines uh, the blood, well, lines the lumen of the blood vessel. So, there is a layer of endothelial cells sitting upon a basement membrane made of collagen. So, these cells here are representing our endothelial cells. Okay, so um, they will have nuclei, so I'll put those in here. So, here are the nuclei of our endothelial cells. Right, and they are sitting on a membrane of collagen. Okay, so this is the basement membrane here in turquoise. Okay, and this will surround the base of the end, all of the endothelial cells, because they're all sitting on this basement membrane. Oops. Okay, so in turquoise there, that is the basement membrane that they're sitting on. So let's label up some of these different components. So here, in turquoise, this is the basement membrane, and this is made up of a huge number of different proteins, but one of its main constituents is collagen, okay? So here's the basement membrane, and then these cells here that are sitting on the basement membrane, we know what these are. These are one of the stars of the show here. These are the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells. Okay, uh, so underneath the uh, basement membrane, you then have the next layer of the blood vessel. Okay, and this is a layer consisting of smooth muscle cells. So let me highlight this in. So, after the layer of the basement membrane with the endothelial cells sitting on it, you then have a layer of smooth muscle cells. And it's not just a single layer of smooth muscle cells, i.e. you don't just have a single smooth muscle cell making up this entire thickness. You'll have multiple smooth muscle cells. So let me draw an example of one of them. So here is our smooth muscle cell sitting here, and we'll have the smooth muscle cell um, coloured in red here. Okay, and I should have just said something earlier, actually. When you have this layer which consists of the basement membrane along with the endothelial cells, and there are a few other little bits as well, but in our diagram this is simple enough. 
So, um, well, this is complex enough, I suppose I should say. Uh, this is the this innermost layer that's prior to um, prior to the tunica media here, the layer of smooth muscle cells. This is known as tunica intima. Okay, uh, so tunica means layer. Intima means close, so this is the layer that is close to the lumen of the blood vessel. Surrounding tunica intima, you then have this layer of smooth muscle cells here, and this is what's known as tunica media. Again, tunica means layer, media means the middle layer, so this is the middle layer of the wall of the blood vessel, tunica media. Okay, and then surrounding tunica media, the outermost layer is another layer of connective tissue. Okay, so I'll highlight this in yellow here. Uh, so this is mainly collagen uh, that is forming this outer layer, which I'm highlighting now in yellow, although I don't know if this will show up brilliantly on the camera. And this is either known as tunica externa or tunica adventitia. And the role of tunica uh, adventitia, there's many roles of it. One of the roles is to connect the blood vessel to surrounding connective tissue of other bodily parts, so to hold the blood vessel in place, basically, so that it's not just moving about. Uh, and then uh, other roles of it are that in larger blood vessels, where the actual wall of the blood vessel needs a blood supply itself, because oxygen can't just diffuse from the blood all the way to the portions out here, then you'll have little blood vessels supplying uh, the blood vessel wall itself uh, running in the tunica adventitia. So this final layer here, this is tunica adventitia. Okay, uh, and those blood vessels which are supplying the wall of the blood vessel itself are known as vasa vasorum. So I'll just put that somewhere. Vasa for blood vessels, vasorum, which means that they're associated with another blood vessel. Right. Okay, so there's our basic structure of uh, our blood vessel. Now, if, let's say, we have come in with a uh, carving knife or something and chopped through our arteriole here, then what will have happened is, let's say we've only cut through a portion of it. Let's say we haven't actually chopped through the entire thing. So, if I draw a side-on picture here, here is the blood vessel. Okay, viewed from the side the cylinder here, and what we've done is maybe put a little cut through here, so we've cut through like that, we've cut a wedge out, so our knife went in here, so am I going to be bold enough to try and draw a knife? So here's our knife, um, coming off up here. Okay, so we've cut through a portion of our arteriole, like so, but we haven't completely cut it off. And it's just going to be um, simpler to understand, just simpler to visualise, basically, if we just have this little cut in the side. Of course, the principles are the same if you've completely severed uh, your way through the little arteriole. Okay, and I want to stress, we are not cutting through an artery here. We are cutting through a very, very small blood vessel. We're not quite cutting through something as small as a capillary, because capillaries aren't even visible, basically. Uh, they Capillaries are one cell thick. One blood vessel comes through at a time. So you're not going to get a huge hemorrhage out of a capillary. Uh, but we are talking about an arterial, which is tiny, tiny little blood vessel. Uh, but it's not an artery. Don't confuse it for an artery, basically. I'm not saying we're cutting through some artery. Arteries are the things that you learn about in anatomy, the ones that you learn uh, their positions and their names. Uh, arterioles, you certainly don't learn the names of these in anatomy. Okay, right, there are far too many of them. Okay, so we have cut through our arteriole. So what's going to now happen is that blood that was in the lumen of the blood vessel here, and I suppose I should have labelled that up, this is the actual lumen of the blood vessel here through which the red blood cells and the rest, other constituents of the blood are moving. So here are our red blood cells, and, there are, and the blood plasma will also be in there. So you'll have the blood plasma with the red blood cells in, moving in the lumen of the blood vessel. Now, when you start, um, when you cut the wall of the blood vessel like this with our carving knife here, then what's going to start happening is you'll start going to get a hemorrhage. Blood is going to start leaving the blood vessel through here. So when you bleed, the fancy word for bleeding 
is hemorrhage, and I suppose the American spelling might be different again, but this is the English, uh, sorry, the British English spelling of um, hemorrhage. I suppose in uh, the American English, it might just, it will probably just omit the A there and then have hemorrhage. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, let's now talk about the process which stops this. The process of hemostasis is how we clog up this cut here to stop uh, blood coming out. And this is why it's easier to visualise it when you've just got a little uh, cut in it rather than it completely severed. But the principles, as I say, are the same if it's completely severed. Okay, so, um, what the, the starting point for this all, all of this is a component of the blood known as platelets. So, in the blood, you have the blood plasma, and then you have the cells within the pl uh, blood plasma. So you have red blood cells, you have white blood cells, and then another sort of fragment of a cell, it's debatable as to whether it really is a cell, um, is a platelet. Now, these things are tiny compared to red blood cells. So, here's a massive great red blood cell, and the platelet is much smaller here, so this is the platelet here. Okay, and platelets are also known as thrombocytes. Okay, and we'll continue this video where we'll see how platelets or thrombocytes are going to actually uh, uh, lead to the hemostasis process in the next video.